One of the toughest things that players have to learn in Escape from Tarkov is ammo types. There are over 150 different ammos in this game. That's pretty overwhelming, especially when you consider that each ammo has different values, such as velocity, damage, penetration, fragmentation chance. The list keeps going on. But what does all that information mean and how do you use it in game? I'm going to do what I can to explain all of this in a simple way. Let's get into it. We're gonna pull up two different guns here because the first thing we're gonna look at is caliber. And you can see your gun's caliber right here on the bottom left of the gun picture. This one is 556 by 45. This one's gonna be 762 by 51. You can also double click your gun and it just says caliber right here, 762 by 51. This caliber value determines which type of round that the gun can fire. You cannot put a 556 by 45 ammo in a 762 by 51 gun. Caliber is really just that simple. But once you've established your caliber, if you do a linked search on the gun and look at all the ammos, you can see that this 762 by 51 gun has about six or seven different ammos that you can use. So how do you know which one to pick? And this is going to lead us into using another ammo chart. This is the same ammo chart that I use in most of my videos. It's my favorite Tarkov ammo chart to use. It stays updated. It's clean. It's easy to read. I pretty much just use it all the time. I'm gonna link this down in the description for you guys so you can look at it for yourself. The first values we're gonna look at when it comes to ammos are your damage and penetration values. Now, these are pretty simple to explain. Damage is going to be the raw amount of damage that you will do to another character's health. And your penetration value is going to be the value that determines how well a bullet will penetrate the other player's armor. And you've got this little color-coded chart over here on the right that kind of gives you a visual of how effective the ammos are against certain armors. Zero is going to be not effective at all, whereas six is going to be 100% effective. Let's pick a few different ammos here for comparison. We'll use TGS for the low grade ammo. Let's talk about BP for mid grade and BS for high end. So on your T ammo, you're doing 57 damage at 20 penetration. If you scroll over here to the right and look at the right side of the chart, this is going to be full penetration against class one and class two armor. But then you fall off really hard on class 3 and you do nothing to class 4, 5, and 6. So if the character you're shooting has on class 4 armor, you are not penetrating that armor. Therefore, none of your damage is going into that character if you're shooting an armored area of the body. Now, if you switch around and you start shooting legs or arms or stomach or any other unarmored part of the body, you will do full 57 damage to that character. Whereas if we take a look down here at the BPGS, you've got 45 damage and 37 penetration. You've got a lower damage value, but you've got a significantly higher penetration value. And if you look at the chart over here on the right, this is gonna open up the door for you to penetrate class one, class two, class three, class four, and it penetrates class five about 50% of the time, and it's barely gonna touch class six. But let's talk about the class four armor enemy again. At this point, you're doing about 80% penetration chance against class four armor, with 45 damage. Now a character's thorax only has 80 health. So if you're shooting them in the thorax and you shoot three bullets, you should theoretically kill this character. 45 damage on the first bullet. The second bullet's gonna put you at 90 damage total, but you do only have the 80% penetration chance. So although you've done 90 damage, it's not reliably going to put all 90 of that into their chest. But that third bullet is going to put you at 135 damage dealt. And with the 80% penetration chance taken into account, you should theoretically kill a class 4 player with only 3 shots of BP. And now let's move down here to PPBS, which has a 37 damage, but a 62 penetration chance. This penetration value is going to penetrate every armor in the game 100%. The hang up with this is going to be the 37 damage. We just mentioned that BP will have around a three bullet kill time against the class four player. Although it is one of the nastiest ammos in the game, the PPBS only does 37 damage at a 100% penetration rate. Now we're gonna use a little bit of math again. Your first shot's put in 37 damage. By the time you shoot your second shot, you've done 74 damage. You still need to shoot a third bullet to kill that enemy in the thorax. So let's compare these two ammos together. If you're shooting a class four enemy with BP, you need to shoot three rounds to kill them. If you're shooting a class four enemy with PPBS, you still need to shoot three rounds to kill them. But let's talk about class six armor just to mention it so I don't get bashed around a lot about that. PPBS, 
against class 6 armor, 100% penetration. Still 37 damage, 3 bullets to the thorax to kill an enemy. Obviously, BP does not have the penetration to be effective against class 6. It's just not going to happen. You, I mean, you're going to have to mag dump them to kill them. So let's scroll down here to BT. 42 damage at 42 penetration. Significantly less penetration than PPBS with a little bit more damage. Now BT is going to do about 50% chance of penetration against class 6. At 42 damage per bullet, the first bullet's going to do 42 damage. The second's going to put you at 84 damage. The third bullet is going to put you at 126 damage. And the fourth bullet is going to put you at 168 damage. Now, taking into account that we only have a 50% chance to penetrate, but we're doing 168 damage, 50% penetration at 168 damage is 84 damage to the body. Four bullets to kill with BT against class 6 theoretically, versus PPBS being at three bullets. And then if we wrap full circle back to the T ammo we were talking about earlier, which does 57 damage, eight bullets of T ammo will do 456 damage as long as you do not shoot the player in the armor. It takes eight bullets to kill somebody with T ammo. PPBS took three, BT took four. So as you can see, damage values and pin values are a very, very, very broad topic. It is very tough to explain how the bullets will work per shot against certain players because it's all going to be situational. But whatever you do, do not let some of these Tarkov players convince you that the only good ammo to use is the high penetration stuff. It's just not true. There are a lot of instances in Tarkov where lower, a little bit lower penetration will actually kill a player faster just due to having the higher damage value. If you've got an extremely high penetration value but a lower damage number, sometimes you still have to shoot the same amount of bullets to kill the player. And now let's get a little bit more advanced into it. Every bullet has a fragmentation chance, and the fragmentation chance is the chance a bullet will fragment, splitting into extra pieces, and it'll deal 50% extra damage. Pretty much, there is a chance that when your bullet hits, it explodes, and it does more damage. Now, this is a value that I'm going to cover really quick. I don't ever really look at it. I think that damage and penetration are a lot more important than fragmentation chance, just because you don't have a say-so on when your bullet fragments and when it doesn't. It's all just random, and it's luck of the draw. So if we look at something like PS, it has a 48 damage with a 40% fragmentation chance. If the bullet fragments you do an additional 40%, which is 19.2 damage. So effectively, you're doing 67.2 damage in one shot. Again, it's not a very reliable way to calculate how much damage you're doing. It's tough to calculate a lucky chance. So personally, I tend to ignore this value. If my bullet fragments and I kill somebody quicker, awesome. If it doesn't, awesome. And if you look right next to fragmentation chance, you've got a value called your recoil. And this is another very simple one. This is just going to be a value that determines how much more or how much less your bullet will make your gun recoil. Now the recoil conversation gets a little bit tricky and a lot of people have their preferences. Do you want to hit for more damage per bullet or do you want to hit more bullets? If your ammo theoretically does one damage per bullet and you shoot 100 bullets for 100 damage at zero recoil, so you hit every bullet you fire. Versus if you use another ammo that has one damage per bullet, you shoot 100 bullets, but it has a 20% more recoil. So let's pretend you miss 15 to 20 bullets. You only hit 80 bullets worth, so you only do, you do less damage total. Recoil is going to boil down to personal preference, what you get used to, and do you want to hit people hard or do you want to hit people a lot? Some ammos, it's better to use the lower damage, lower penetration ammo with the lower recoil just so you can really pump them full of ammo. But for guns like snipers and marksman rifles, the recoil doesn't really matter all that much because you're single firing and you're not full auto, therefore you're not really having to fight recoil so much. The next stat on the chart to look at is accuracy. I'm going to run through this one really fast. You can tell on the chart right here, something like 7 in 40 gives you 50% more accuracy, whereas BS gives you minus 3% accuracy. Realistically, your gun is going to hold the major value when it revolves around accuracy. Your ammo is not going to affect it too terribly much. And if we're being completely honest, accuracy is kind of one of those statistics that you don't even need to look at unless you're shooting 200 meters or more. 
And even when shooting that far, your gun is still going to be the primary form of accuracy, and I, I just don't even pay attention to ammo accuracy. The next stat on the chart is effective distance. The effective distance is the distance when the bullet loses 25% of its damage and penetration. Essentially, if you shoot 7N40, it has 52 damage and it has an effective distance of 388. If you shoot somebody that is 400 meters away, you're not hitting them with 52 damage, you're hitting them with 52 minus the 25%. So you're only going to be hitting them for 39 damage. And your penetration is also going to be lower and you're only going to be hitting them with about 33 penetration. So for effective distance, once you get really long range, it's just going to take a few more shots to kill a player. That's really all it boils down to. It's a pretty important value to look at only if you're sniping or going for those 400 plus meter shots. The maximum headshot distance is going to play into the effective distance a little bit. This is the maximum distance you can get a one shot headshot. If you've ever shot somebody very long range in the head and they didn't die, this is probably why you just lost too much damage and too much penetration to cross that long range to get the one shot headshot. This is why somebody that's using something like an SR-25 can get a one shot headshot across the map because their headshot distance is way farther. Although they're losing 25% damage, 25% pin, it's still enough to go through a helmet or kill somebody in the head. Whereas if you're shooting something like 545 or 556, your headshot distance is reduced because the ammo is shooting lower damage, lower penetration, and you're losing 25% after your effective distance. And the next value we're going to look at is going to be the speed of the bullet, otherwise known as the velocity. In a very simple nutshell, the velocity is how fast the bullet flies. If we get a little bit deeper into it, the velocity is going to affect, affect the ballistics of the ammo. Every ammo has a drop off curve, which is why your bullets drop at longer ranges. Higher velocity is going to stay flatter for longer and then drop, whereas a lower velocity bullet is just going to drop off at a shorter range. It's the sole reason why something like a sniper round, if you aim at somebody's head at 400 meters, you have very little bullet drop. Whereas something like 5.56, five, if you shoot at somebody's head, you have a lot of bullet drop. The bullet goes all the way down to here. Again, I'm providing the chart in the description below if you guys want to crunch the velocity numbers. Different calibers, the ammos have different velocities. If you compare this BSGS with 785 velocity, it's going to have more bullet drop than this SNB, which has 875 velocity. And this value also determines if your target is running across the screen, how much you need to lead that target to shoot them. Obviously, if they're far away and they're running fast and you shoot and your bullet is slow, it's going to go behind them and you're going to miss them. If you have a higher velocity bullet and they're running fast and you shoot, it's going to hit them. There's only three more stats that can be talked about regarding Tarkov ammo. Failure to feed chance, heat, and durability burn. And all three of these kind of play together in affecting how your gun handles the ammo. So you can see on this 545 by 39 PP ammo, you've got a 20% durability burn, you've got 54% additional heat, and your failure to feed chance is very low. What the failure to feed chance means is your bullet will not jam as much going into the gun. There is a very low chance that it will fail to feed. And over here on the left, you've also got misfire chance, which is low. This is pretty self-explanatory. There's a low chance that the round will misfire. Now let's talk about durability burn, plus 20%. What this means is every ammo in Tarkov will affect your gun's durability as you shoot the rounds. You can take this AKS 74 UB for example and you can see my durability is 96 out of 100. Plus 20% durability burn just means that for every value of damage that your gun takes per bullet is amplified plus 20%. So theoretically if you could fire a thousand rounds of PP ammo and only lose 50 durability with this plus 20% durability burn that same 1000 rounds would do about 60 to 70% durability damage. And every ammo is going to have its own durability burn specs. We can pull this PP up next to the BP and you can see that the durability burn of BP is 35% versus PP's 20%. Now the heat is also going to play a pretty critical role in how your ammo acts in your gun, especially if you're using suppressors. If you've seen in Tarkov, your suppressor gets very red while you shoot. This heat multiplier is partially what causes that. This heat factor really only plays a deal whenever you're full automatic spraying versus single firing. You know, if you're single firing you shoot and then your gun has a time to cool down then you shoot again usually whenever you're full auto the heat value kind of rolls over and you can watch your gun get hotter and it's just going to amplify your chance of your gun to jam or misfire 
So obviously when it comes to misfire chance, failure to feed, heat, and durability, you want those values to be as low as possible, but I would not make any of those values the make or break deciding factor on which ammo you should use. Just be aware of it if you are using an ammo that has a higher durability burn or a higher misfire chance that you are running the risk of your gun jamming up or misfiring in a fight. And also the higher the fire rate of the gun, the more you should pay attention to these values. Because the more bullets that you're shooting means the more chances of a misfire and the higher your misfire chance goes, even more chance of a misfire. There are a lot of values that revolve around ammo and what you should and should not use. You know, are you sniping? Do you have a fast fire rate gun where you don't necessarily need as much damage because you're doing just a lot of bullets into the player? Or do you have a slower fire rate gun where you really need that damage to count? Did you go into raid with a decent ammo, but then you accidentally ran across somebody wearing a slick and an alt and then you're wondering why you didn't kill them? Ammo is very, very, very situational. There are a lot of different factors to look at, which is why I provided the chart for you guys to look at and figure out, you know, what's going on, what are you seeing, and what do you need? I hope I did a good enough job of explaining that you guys can kind of start to understand what you're looking at whenever it comes to the ammo types. I tried my hardest to keep it simple. It's just kind of a tricky topic to keep in a simplified manner. If you guys have other suggestions or things you want to add or things you think that I just absolutely missed feel free to comment them i'm sure there's a lot that i missed when explaining this if you like this video or maybe you like other videos like this leave a like maybe a subscribe to my channel but i've been talking a lot and i feel like i covered really everything that needed to be covered so i'm gonna dip out and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out baby